Picked up my 95 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Towed in from uh, just outside Philadelphia with the heavy Chevy. My Jeep and trailer come in around 6,000 pounds. Truck worked a little bit, but it did it. Squatting too. So right now this is the left rear brakes. Whole setup, there's your caliper with new pads. And this is the rotor, and the rotor, I just gave that a light sand with some 80 grit sandpaper, and if you look closely, you're not going to be able to see on the camera, it still has its original, um, like, factory finish when, the, when they're brand new. So there's a little bit of surface rust, but these are actually pretty new. And the parking brake, if you take the rotor off, right there. Very, very, very similar to drum brakes. I mean, it is drum brakes, essentially. That's them. Inside you can see your tone wheel for the analog brake system. And everything's a little rusted, but you know, overall it's not bad. In the back, you'll see a lever, that, that's the cable that applies the parking brake. I use parking brake and e-brake interchangeably, even though I guess you shouldn't. And inside this, um, this brake rotor, this is a disc, disc rotor, is the drum part of the rotor where the e-brake goes. That again, I just scuffed up with some 80 grit. That's, that's what we do at work when we adjust them. Now I'm going to spray some uh, multi-purpose lubricant all over all these nice rusty parts. Hopefully that'll that'll free things up and allow the uh, e-brake to be applied um, and disengaged uh, easily. Yeah, I'm working over here because I can't get the thing started. Ha! Huh. Okay, now what we're looking at is the e-brake cable. There it is, runs all the way up to the center console. Now, on the end of this cable is a spring right here. Now if I push this in, it retracts nicely with the help of that spring. So it leads me to believe that the, this um, lever right here, this lever, which is pulled that way by this cable, is frozen. You can see, I, damn, I can't even move it. <sighs> so, that's actually good news. That means I don't have to replace the cable. I just have to take apart the, the e-brake components, clean them up, maybe grind some gunk off, and put some uh, uh, brake grease in there. And uh, I should do it. So this is it. This is the culprit right here. This device is what actually um, what the cable pulls on to apply the parking brake. Cable attaches right here and as it pulls this back you'll have a brake shoe that goes right here this end of the brake shoe fits right in there and then you'll have another the other brake shoe just like that and that side will go up against there. So as you're pushing that cable, or I'm sorry, as you're pulling on the e-brake, you are moving this lever, which then pushes the shoes apart. This thing was all frozen up, and it fought me like a SOB to come out. Now I realize that the way it comes out it is two pieces. I just I used I wire brushed it with the wire wheel. Put a little grease on there. Now, there you go. All back to it. Turns nice now. <laughs> this thing really kind of beat me up, but there it is. Kind of. So now I just cleaned up the e-brake adjuster. The way this works is this star wheel threads over this one shaft, and the whole assembly slides in and out of this piece right here. And what this does is adjusts your e-brake. The top one I just got done cleaning on the wire wheel. Uh, the bottom one, I've yet to clean the wire wheel. This one isn't as frozen as this one was. This one, this one was pretty bad. I had to put this in the uh, in the vise and put a pair of, of um, channel locks on this, twist it out, work it, work it loose with some PV blaster. Cleaned up good, though, with the wire wheel. So this is what the piece, uh, what it looks like when it's assembled. And the way it works is this star wheel is turned. And what it does is it pushes the um, this uh, 
threaded rod where my thumb is, it pushes that out, and therefore that is what adjusts the tension on the uh, the parking brake or the e-brake.